<coughs> Did I just sneeze on this book? Nobody knows. Hello world, welcome back to another video. Today I want to do something which I promised to do in my readathon announcement. So for those of you who don't know, quick recap, at the end of April I am hosting a readathon together with three other Dutch booktubers, namely Berta, Daphne and Lucy. I'll link all the announcement videos down below, but just to quickly get you up to speed, the readathon runs from April the 27th until the 30th, which is four days, there are four reading challenges, and one of them is to read a book by a Dutch author. If you're not Dutch, it might be a bit difficult to know where to start with this challenge, and even if you are Dutch, it's completely possible that you're not aware of some of the books that I'm about to mention because you prefer to read in English and you don't really care about Dutch books. So I decided to make this video and give everyone some helpful guidelines to not only find a book that is appropriate for the challenge, but one that is also fun to read and suits your reading tastes. Over the last couple of years there's been quite a trend of translating Dutch uh, books, both children's books and kind of more adult literature, into English. Um, it's, it's become quite a big deal and also at the bookshop where I work we have um, quite a reasonable selection of translated Dutch works and we also recently did a window display on um, Dutch literature. won't be going into every book ever written that's suitable for this challenge in this video, but I will put a couple of recommendation lists in the description down below, so by all means browse through those to see if there's anything that appeals to you in there. In this video I just want to highlight a couple of books that I'm considering for this challenge and that I think might be fun for other people to read as well. Basically I just kind of want to give you an idea of the possibilities that are there to kind of maybe give you a nudge, um, make you think of something that you hadn't thought of before. This video might be a long one, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I, I feel like I've prepared quite a lot, but maybe it's just because I put a lot of time in prepping for this video that I feel like it's gonna be a long video. Anyway, get yourself some tea and a snack and settle in. I don't actually have tea myself, but I have my water bottle because I realized I really had not had enough water today yet. So there are a few things to take into account here. The first is that there are plenty of authors who write their books and who get published in Dutch and whose works are then translated into English and other languages, which is something that I'll come back to. But there are also authors who write in English in the first place. There are two authors in particular that I'm thinking about and the first one is Marike Nijkamp who wrote This Is Where It Ends. This book is about a school shooting um, told from four different perspectives over the course of 54 minutes. From what I understand, it's quite an intense dark book and it definitely comes with some trigger warnings so if you're not up for that, then by all means steer clear. On the upside, Marika Nijkamp is a huge diversity advocate, so there's a lot of representation and inclusivity in this book, which I think is great. She's also just a really nice person. I met her last year at Dutch Comic Con, where she was one of our featured authors, and she was cool. The second author is Corina Davis, who, among other things, wrote On the Edge of Gone. This is a near-future kind of doomsday slash apocalyptic story set in the Netherlands, even though it's written in English. This author is also also really big on representation and inclusivity, especially when it comes to disability. She's the co-founder of this organization called Disability and Kidlit. But also other things such as, you know, race, gender, ethnicity, religion, basically everything that you find in the real world, but not always in books. I was present at the launch of this book because it was organized together with the American Book Center, which is where I work 
and the author read the first chapter to the audience and I really liked it in terms of tone and pacing so this is definitely one of the books that is a serious contender for my readathon pick. As for Dutch books translated into English, like I said that has become quite a big deal over the last couple of years, not just recent releases being translated but also kind of Dutch literary classics. Just so you know I'll only be talking about fiction books in this video because I just I don't know enough about Dutch non-fiction translated or otherwise to kind of say anything sensible about that but if you'd like to read one of those I am sure there are resources for that. So there are a few books that I want to mention. First of all uh, some of Tonke Dracht's works have recently been translated into English. The Letter for the King and The Secrets of the Wild Wood are a duology that have been translated by Laura Watkinson. She actually made her booktube debut on Sana's channel over at Books and Quills which I will link down below the video that she's in and she seems like an absolutely wonderful person so that makes me want to read these books even more. Donke Dracht is one of my favourite Dutch authors but strangely enough I've never read these books not in English but also not in Dutch even though they are some of her most famous works. I do own signed copies of both of these and I feel really bad that I've never read them so these are also well part one is also a serious contender for my TBR for the readathon. Donke Dracht's book The Song of Seven which is called De Zevensprong in Dutch has also been translated. Then I briefly want to talk about another Dutch children's book author and that is Thea Beckman. She wrote a lot of books but there is one in particular that has definitely been translated into English. It kind of took off and it's also been turned into an English speaking film actually. It's called Crusade in Jeans. In Dutch it's called Kruistocht in Spijkerbroek. That must sound really weird if you don't know Dutch. I read this book in Dutch. This is a Dutch edition for the first time when I was 10 or 11 and I fell in love with it. It's definitely a little bit old-fashioned by now. It was written in the 70s, I think the early 70s, but I feel like the core of the story still speaks to people today. I feel like it aged quite well. But this book is about a Dutch boy named Dolph who kind of volunteers to test out a time machine and he is accidentally stranded in the Middle Ages when he misses his return moment. He ends up joining this children's crusade that just happens to pass as he is sitting in a field. Fun fact, he makes a friend along the way named Leonardo who is actually Leonardo Fibonacci so that's fun. As far as adult fiction goes I just kind of want to mention a couple of titles briefly. First a, a classic Dutch literary author is Harry Mullish. Some of his books have definitely been translated into English. Two titles that come to mind are The Assault and The Discovery of Heaven. This is the Dutch edition. Um, it has been translated. It's also been turned into a film with Stephen Fry. A more modern Dutch author is Herman Koch whose, um, whose novel The Dinner has been translated into English and like 20 other languages. A couple of other titles that come to mind are The Secret Diary of Hendrik Groen, 83 and a quarter years old or something, which is quite a recent release. It came out last year and it's about the sort of the secret life that the elderly live in a nursing home. There's also Hex by Thomas Alderhovelt, which is a horror book. Um, as you may know, I am the buyer for the horror section at work, and this is a book that's received quite some positive reviews from our customers. Like I said, I will leave some more recommendations down in the description, and if you have any questions or additions, by all means let me know and I will try and get back to you. If you are thinking about joining the Readathon of Kings, definitely leave a comment. It would be great to sort of get an idea of how many people are actually doing this, going on this adventure with us. That's all for today. Um, no Sprite moment because I'm at my parents' place and I forgot to bring Sprite with me. But I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!